Hi everyone and welcome to the Etsy Fireside Chats. I'm Heather Jassy and I lead members and community here at Etsy. Um, these are ways that we can connect with you, answer your questions, and give you a chance to meet different people from Etsy. Um, every time we'll cover different topics of interest. I want to give you a couple of disclaimers before we get started. Um, first, I have a verbal disclaimer that anything discussed in this video is current as of today. Just keep that in mind in the future if you look at this because some of the information may change. Um, also, keep in mind that this discussion may include some forward-looking statements about Etsy's future. Uh, we have high hopes, but there are, of course, risks and uncertainties, and you should refer to our SEC filings for additional information. Today's guest is Etsy CEO Chad Dickerson. Welcome. Thank you. Um, we wanted to give you a chance to get to know Chad a little bit better. Um, thanks to all of you who posted such thoughtful questions on social media. They were really great. We have lots of questions for Chad, so in the interest of time, we've consolidated some of those questions um, thematically. Let's get started. We have a ton. All right. Okay, uh, Chad, we're both native Southerners. Where are you from exactly, and what did you want to be when you grew up? Yeah, so I, I grew up in Greenville, North Carolina, which mm -hmm. is about halfway between uh, Raleigh and the coast. Um, it's, it's very much, or when I grew up there, it was very much a farming area. Mm -hmm. So uh, both sets of my grandparents were tobacco farmers. So I spent a lot of time uh, kind of messing around on a farm and like walking around in mm -hmm. pig pens and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so it was really, uh, really kind of Southern farming upbringing. Um, but when I was a kid, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to be when I grew up. I was interested in a lot of different things. Uh, there are times I wanted to be a, a writer. There are times I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, uh, I don't think I ever wanted to be the CEO of an internet company because uh, the internet didn't exist <laughs> right. back then. So, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I had a lot, of, a lot of dreams back yeah. there in Greenville. Cool. Um, you've been at Etsy a long time. When did you mm -hmm. first join Etsy and what brought you here? Yeah, so I, I joined Etsy in September 2008. Uh, I joined because I got a call one day from Katerina Fake. She was one of the early investors in Etsy. Um, I think she invested uh, probably nine months into the company. Mm -hmm. And she told me that uh, the, the company needed a lot of help on the technology side. Um, I was really settled in the Bay Area. I lived in, in Berkeley, California. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I decided to come out and visit Etsy, uh, and I talked to Rob, and I talked to the, the folks here at Etsy at the time. It was a very small team, mm -hmm. and it was really clear that they needed my help. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and this is the very abbreviated story. My wife and I, who had no plans to, to move back east, just really fell in love with Etsy, and mm -hmm. uh, the next thing I knew, I was here. Uh, but I was really inspired by uh, how much everyone loved Etsy. So when I met the sellers, uh, they talked about how much they loved Etsy. Everyone who worked at Etsy loved mm -hmm. Etsy. And it was a company, but there was this real kind of loving aspect about it that was mm -hmm. just really unique. Cool. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the early days at Etsy? I've heard a story um, before <laughs> about an early intro you had. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, S, you know, Etsy, like a lot of startups, um, you know, the company was only a, just over a couple years old, uh, was, was really messy. Mm -hmm. So, um, Coming in as the CTO, that's the chief technology officer, you know, my job was to make the technology work, mm -hmm. and the technology was not working very well. So the site, uh, my first week, went down for an hour. Um, there were a lot of technology problems. Uh, search and everything was really slow. And uh, one of my uh, sort of biggest memories of that time is before I even started at Etsy, um, I, I was on Twitter, and I'm still on Twitter. Uh, a, a few sellers reached out to me, and sent me an open letter that had a list of demands. I think it was about 20 demands. And uh, you know, I wasn't even, I literally wasn't even on the ground yet. I was, you know, I think in the airport in San Francisco about to fly out here. Didn't it start with take two aspirin, have a seat? It started with take, take two aspirin, <laughs> yeah. um, or as I recall, take two, two aspirin or whatever painkiller mm -hmm. um, helps you the most <laughs> <laughs> because you're about to deal with a, a, you know, a big, big challenge. Yeah. And it was a big challenge. Yeah. And, and what, it, you know, some of the things you mentioned were like site stability and search, like keep the site up, obviously. Yes. That, was a, that was a task <laughs> list of things to get started. Yeah, I kind of think time. about it. it. It was almost like, uh, you know, if any of you took psychology in high school or college, this idea of Maslow's hierarchy and there's <laughs> air and water at the, at the bottom. And that's what you keep need to live. Up. That was, that was yeah. keep the site up. I think it's something we sort of take for granted now that when mm -hmm. the site goes down, it's a really big deal. But that used to happen a lot. It used to happen a lot. Yeah. It used to happen every time we tried to make a change to the site, right. which, uh, you know, if you remember those early days, it was, 
it was really hard uh, at the time. There weren't a lot of features coming out, and there you know a lot of a lot of needs. So that first open letter that I got, um, it's it's the first job I've ever had where I've gotten a list of demands going into the job. But uh, you know the list was really valid. There were a lot of things that needed to happen. I know one of the things I did when I first got to Etsy was just call and do phone interviews with lots of mm -hmm. sellers and had a similar list to that. And I yeah. was really excited when the shipping calculator launched last year. Absolutely. So it was the last of the things on that list. So Absolutely. Really exciting. <laughs> um, so in 2011, you went from being Etsy CTO to CEO. Can you explain a little bit about mm -hmm. the difference between those two? And then um, how did you have to grow and adjust as a leader when you made that transition? Sure. So uh, being a CTO, you're chief technology officer, so in, you're in charge of all the the systems and software mm -hmm. and, and uh, the building of the product and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's really important in a company like Etsy where you know, all of our sellers, all of our buyers are interacting with us on the web and on mobile devices, so critically important. Um, but as CEO, you're in charge of the whole company. So uh, you know, you're managing a board of directors, leading a board of directors. I'm the chairman of the board. Um, you're you know, running marketing and business development, all these sorts of things. But I think that the thing in common is um, you have to really be able to build a team and state a strategy and uh, make customers happy and that sort of thing. Uh, so I think, you know, just like anyone who's been through a leadership change, you know, I've had to stretch and grow. Uh, and this July, um, you know, it'll be five years since I've been CEO. Mm -hmm. So at Etsy, um, at this point, I've actually been CEO longer than CTO. But and the company is a lot bigger. Company is a lot bigger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I when I joined, uh, I think there were. 30 to 40 people on staff, and we're getting pretty close to 900. Wow. And the business has grown uh, yeah. incredibly. Cool. Um, so we're going to shift into some questions about entrepreneurship, and this is going to be sort of the majority of our conversation. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best piece of advice you would give about being an entrepreneur? Yeah, um, I think the most important thing, and, and this is true of my job, it's, it's true of all the sellers I meet, is really um, being persistent. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I have yet to meet a person, even someone who looks completely successful from the outside who hasn't had a lot of trials and tribulations along the way. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important to have the mentality that you're going to experience setbacks, but you're really going to learn from those setbacks and really, really push through. Um, mm -hmm. the, the thing that's been really amazing to me about being a CEO, I meet other CEOs, and I meet CEOs who some of you have probably read about in magazines, and you read these stories where it looks like they started here and it was just all up from there. And you realize when you get to know people that uh, literally everyone has struggled. Not a single person I've met um, had an idea, everything went perfectly, and then they've kind of you know, conquered the world. Mm -hmm. um, so it's true of everyone you meet. And I would kind of encourage the entrepreneurs out there, the Etsy sellers, to realize that, that you know, everyone you meet has struggles and, yeah. and uh, you can learn from those struggles. feels like there's, a, there's, there's something important about the combination of um, persistence and then flexibility of thinking. So if you hit an obstacle, you think about how to like get around it in a different sort of way. And yeah. sometimes that leads to an evolution of the business. That's, that's Absolutely. There's, a, there's kind of a fine line between yeah. being persistent and stubborn. Right, right. And, uh, you know, you always have to be self-aware and ask yourself when you're being persistent, you know, am I being stubborn? Am I being closed-minded? I think if you're persistent and determined and open-minded, mm -hmm. uh, you can do just amazing things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we asked um, Etsy sellers via the Etsy Success Facebook and Instagram accounts, what would you like to ask Chad about running a business? We got a lot of great questions. Um, Alicia of Open Quote Designs in the UK wants to know, what's the thing about running a business that makes you wake up in the morning and what keeps you up at night because you run a business? Such a good question. Right. Yeah, it's really uh, the same thing that gets me up in the morning is the same thing that uh, that keeps me up at night. And that's the fact that on Etsy, um, we built a platform that's serving a million and a half sellers around the world. So um, that's what gets me up in the morning. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I go to bed at night, I think about uh, you know, all the sellers around the world who are even depending on Etsy mm -hmm. while I'm asleep. So it's a 24-hour it's a business. It's a global business. But um, you know, I can't think of another company that, I'd, that, that I could work for that, that means so much to the people who sell on it. Um, and also means so much to the people who buy on Etsy. Um, you know, every day I meet people who say, uh, you know, I did my wedding on Etsy. Uh, when I had a baby, I decorated the nursery on Etsy. I meet sellers who tell me that um, 
you know, they were toiling away in some corporate job and they always had kind of creative aspirations and Etsy was kind of a, someone dared them to go on Etsy. So they, they listed something mm-hmm. on Etsy and then they sold it and it suddenly validated this something really deep inside them. Mm-hmm. So I think all of those things combined together is what really keep me excited about Etsy, but also uh, like any person running a business, it gives me anxiety because I'm thinking, you know, all the time, are we doing well enough? Yeah, uh, it's a and, lot of responsibility. Yeah, and yeah. you always look at the things that you want to do better. You never, um, at least the good business people I know, you never look at the things mm-hmm. that you're doing well and celebrate those. You're always looking for the imperfections mm-hmm. and trying to make those better. Uh, let's see, Sarah of Sarah Westwood says, in my business, I have so many ideas, I seem to get a little saturated. I think that's just my creative brain. How do you keep yourself focused? This is a, a favorite yes, topic of yours. Yes, yes. Um, You know, I have a a similar challenge because uh, Etsy is a very idea-driven place. Everyone has great ideas. I have ideas. Um, And I think the biggest challenge is kind of focusing those ideas. So this question really resonates with me. Um, I'm I'm kind of a productivity nerd. So uh, I use a system called GTD, which stands for getting things done. There's a bunch of different software out there. Um, I would encourage you not to get involved in the software yet. (laughs) But uh, there's a great book by David Allen called Getting Things Done that kind of helps you organize your thinking. Um, I do use a piece of software called OmniFocus, uh, and uh, it helps keep me really organized. But I think everyone should have some kind of system, even if it's just you know pen and paper and post-it yeah. notes. Um, but I think that's really important. I teach a class here at Etsy. Um, we have something called Etsy School, as, as Heather knows. Um, and it's a school where anyone in the company can teach a class and anyone in the company can take a class. So I, I teach a class about productivity where I share all of these tips that I've, I've learned over the past mm-hmm. uh, 20 odd years of working. And uh, I do it because I wish someone had sat down with me 20 years ago right. <laughs> and kind of said, here's how my system works. So I had to develop all on my own. So I, th- I think it's, uh, you know, it's really simple, uh, put a system together and, and, and try to stay focused. and. I think the simplest version is, you know, every day write down two or three things you want to get done yeah. and, uh, and focus on those things. And capture everything yes. somewhere. Yeah. And say no a lot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that yeah. the, one of the amazing things about the world we live in is there's so many things you can do. You can, you can, you know, run a business like you do on Etsy, but you could always start another business or you could help right. someone else or, uh, you know, you could try to write a novel. There's so many things that you could try to do. And I think it's important to really focus on uh, one thing at a time. Yeah. I think, I think one of the challenges certainly I faced as a, as a business owner that I know our sellers face as well is that it's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day and all of the work that you have to do that it's hard to, to sort of step away and take time to focus on your longer-term vision, Absolutely. developing new product lines, doing yeah. those sorts of things. So I think having a system that allows you to sort of carve that out is yeah. just is so important. And the same yeah. as being in a business and Absolutely you know, really the same. I mean, we, 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 we deal with this at Etsy, and yeah. I think that... Um, you know, whether it's taking a day a month to really focus on that thing or a day a week, wherever, whatever stage you are, you have to, you have to carve out time to ask yourself, you know, what are you yeah. trying to achieve rather than just kind of busying yourself with to-do lists. Yes. Um, let's see. So speaking of productivity and balance, um, uh, children and work, um, yes. Terry of Blue House <laughs> Joys wants to know, how do you balance growing a business and home life, family, spouse, and kids? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that's really important to me. I would yeah. imagine, it's, it's interesting, as CEO of Etsy, um, I meet a lot of people and they think that, yeah. you know, I have all these people helping me uh, and they, that I don't deal with the same child care issues that everyone else does. But in fact, um, I, I do. And uh, my wife's studying to be a nurse right now. And on Saturday and Sunday, uh, so that she can study, I spend all day looking after my son, who's uh, four years old. And those of you who have four-year-olds, Um, uh, I think taking care of a four-year-old is actually (laughs) a lot harder than running a company. I just read they they ask 437 questions a day. It's completely true. Yeah, I think my son asks 438. (laughs) Um, But I think that the family is really important. I mean, uh, when I I look at my son and he's asking the 438 questions, um, you know, he's, he's... not only my son, but he's kind of the next generation and he's looking to me for, for this guidance. So I think it's really important, even though I have you know, everything I'm working on at Etsy to really like, focus on, on raising my son. So um, the way I think about it is uh, you know, here at Etsy, as the leader of the company, 
um, I have to lead by example. So uh, I've really encouraged in our executive team, of which Heather's a part, um, really simple things. Like if you have an issue uh, with childcare, just tell the team, like, uh, you know, I need to go home and take care of my child. And mm -hmm. that sounds really simple, but I've worked for companies where that's kind of a, a strange thing to do. Like people don't yeah. want to talk about their home obligations. Um, I also uh, try to take time off. Uh, like my son was in a kind of a winter holiday concert mm -hmm. recently at two o'clock. So I left and said, I'm going to go see my son um, in his winter concert. Um, it's really fun to see little kids uh, sing so and that cute. sort of thing. And so uh, I've tried to create a really flexible environment at Etsy. And um, you know, one of the things that I hear from Etsy sellers when I talk to them is you know, they enjoy uh, that on Etsy, they can take time for the family and take time for the business. So in, in a lot of ways, I'm just channeling what I've learned from sellers mm -hmm. um, into Etsy and really lining it up with my values. But um, you know, it's really, whether you're running an Etsy shop or you're running Etsy, uh, it's really not worthwhile unless you're spending time with your family. And yeah. I think that that's the way we, we think about our work at Etsy. And we work yeah. a lot. Like, it's a lot of hours. And yeah. it's, for me, you know, seven days a week. And uh, again, it's like a global business. But I think, um, you know, our, our mission's reimagining commerce to build a more fulfilling and lasting world. And uh, I think that really starts at home. So yeah. you have to do that. I think... Um you know, the fact that you model this, you took your paternity leave. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, even when companies have, uh, they allow that, but the, the leaders don't do it, it, it makes people scared to do it. And so I yeah. think that, like, by leading with example, I think yeah. it creates a, a different sort of atmosphere right. here, which yeah, is Yeah, I think that, yeah. that kind of thing should be normal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that, um, you know, I think it's important that, that men do their part um, yeah. in taking care of the, the kids at home, too. Yeah, word. Yeah, totally agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we could have a two-hour long chat on, on Absolutely. the challenges of balancing work and small children. Um, let's see, uh, shifting just a little bit, mm -hmm. um, Joanne of Joanne Helfer Solom says, I would love to know if you have a business mentor or model that you worked from. Sure. So uh, I think it's really important to have um, support. You know, I mentioned a minute ago that I talk to CEOs and I hear their stories and it's never kind of the clear path right. that you think it's going to be. And so I think... Uh, you know, how do I get those stories? Mm -hmm. um, I'm part of a CEO peer group. Uh, so I meet with a group of CEOs, about six CEOs, mm -hmm. uh, once every three months. And we have a mailing list. And we, we trade information and we, we talk it's about... It's going to be a fun mailing list. It's a really fun <laughs> mailing list. <laughs> and it, it's, a, it's a, really, uh, a really caring group. So, yeah. you know, people in this group talk about everything from their businesses to um, how their home lives are going. Mm -hmm. So to, on the... On the topic of family, you know, work balance, uh, one of the things that one of the fellow CEOs, talk, CEOs talked about um, in one of our meetings was that he started coaching his son's baseball team. Mm -hmm. And it was really, it gave him a lot of energy and excitement at work because he was so engaged in what cool. he was doing there. So yeah. I think it's really important um, for, for sellers, uh, the ones I've talked to, the peer support is incredibly important. Yeah. And I know many sellers are part of Etsy teams. Mm -hmm. And I think about the CEO group that I have is kind of like an Etsy team for yeah. me. It's hugely important. Because being, being an entrepreneur can just be incredibly isolating if you don't have community, people to call and ask questions. Absolutely. And like have more yeah. support. I know uh, we both went to the Team Captain Summit mm -hmm. um, in, in Amsterdam in the fall. And we were just struck by like, team captains that have teams of a thousand people and are like yeah. facing some of those similar management right. challenges really. And when I sat down and spoke with, yeah. with some of those captains, yeah. the, yeah, the, the challenges are the same. I yeah. mean, they're running a, uh, it's not even officially a company, but yeah. running a group that's just as large as, you know, what people would yeah. consider a significant size company. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So I have other, I have now shifting some questions about, um, Etsy. Um, Katie of Katie Lynn and several other sellers want to know what your vision is for Etsy's future. Sure. So I think um, when I think about Etsy, uh, I go back to the mission, which is to reimagine commerce mm -hmm. in ways that build a more fulfilling and lasting world. So everything we're doing is really uh, focused on you know, making commerce uh, more human and more humane and making the world better. So uh, that includes everything from how we run the company to how we build the platform and, and all mm -hmm. of those things. So everything we do, we think about um, can the interaction really lift people up rather than, than you know, sort of push them down. And mm -hmm. 
when I look at the, the kind of larger retail environment, um, it's all about price and convenience and lowering the cost and doing everything faster. Mm -hmm. And I really want Etsy to be a haven for people who care about quality, who care about craftsmanship, who want commerce to mean something mm -hmm. and uh, really want to be respected. Mm -hmm. um, one area that I think uh, is really, really uh, illustrative of that is what we're doing with, with wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, and Heather's worked on this uh, and her team has worked on this a lot. Our set of retailer commitments where mm -hmm. You know, Etsy, we've, we've leveraged the collective power of all the sellers um, to really represent their needs to mm -hmm. retailers, including everyone from Macy's to Whole Foods to Land of Nod. And we really put a stake in the ground for, uh, for humane commerce and said, mm -hmm. you can do business with these wonderful artisans, uh, these wonderful makers, but these are the terms. And, uh, you know, we Etsy are standing behind yeah. that. So we really think of it as building this new Etsy economy um, that we want to be the dominant economy that's really about people and family and community and, uh, and the things that really make life worth living. I, um, I went to the Etsy opening, the opening of the Etsy shop at Macy's last yes. week, and it was just so exciting. <laughs> it was so exciting to see the designers there who worked so hard and brought these beautiful things. It was just it was really incredible. Um, and it's a, just a different kind of commerce to have someone standing next to the things that they made. Absolutely. Just, um, so beautiful, but I think I think wholesale is a really interesting example because we um, we have lots of independent retailers as well who who um, may not they tend to not purchase as large an order as a Macy's, but right. but by working with a lot of different types of partners, sellers who can't quite produce like I think the perception is that only sellers who can produce lots like huge quantities mm -hmm. can participate in wholesale, and it's just not true. We're trying to really make it accessible to a lot of right. different types of designers are at different stages yeah. of their business. So and Etsy's always going to be a collection yeah. of many small things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, I I I I love what, what you and your team are doing with wholesale and what we're all doing with wholesale because it yeah. it really uh, it really shines a light on that. I was at Macy's yesterday. Oh you went? I yeah. went, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I took my I took my son and uh, he was <laughs> he was actually a little confused because he thinks of Etsy as a place where I work. Right. And uh, he saw the Etsy signs in the store and he had a, a lot more questions. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. 439. 439 yes, questions. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's go to the next thing. Let's see. Um, Victoria of Andy Bird in Australia says, how do you connect with the millions of Etsy sellers to determine their needs and build them into your plans for Etsy's future? Absolutely. Um, really connecting with sellers is built into the way we run the company. Um, and it's, it's become very institutionalized. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have seller studio visits. Um, Heather mentioned that the Captain Summit in yeah. uh, Amsterdam recently. And one of the things I enjoyed about that was going to uh, visit with the seller in it's Amsterdam. Mariska of DIY Fluffies. Mariska, yes. DIY yes. Fluffies. Yes. Um, yes. She does amazing work. And yes. she, she brought us into her home and served us uh, like really great local food. And, mm -hmm. and we had coffee and it was really, really nice. So that's just kind of a normal thing we do. There's, we spent time with Tyler McBride here in, uh, in Brooklyn uh, of uh, TM 1985. So, we talk to sellers all the time. Um, uh, I send cards to sellers. Yeah. Uh, you know, we celebrated our IPO last April, and a lot of sellers joined us. And I sent them all handwritten cards, and uh, yeah. you know, keep up with them. I get combos every single day, uh, and and uh, love hearing from sellers and, and what they have to say. Um, but we've really uh, made it so that everyone in the company is really connected to sellers. They do support rotations and, and everything else, and it's just. It's kind of like the air that we breathe. Yeah. Um, every every day, I see sellers coming in and um, you know stopping by my office and you know having lunch with us, and it's just kind of who we are. Yeah, I think it's really important for the co everyone in the company to be interacting with the people for whom we're doing this. It's just yeah. um, I, I love that we do the studio tours, and you can read uh, there's some blog posts about it. Um, but everyone in the company, you know, should be going on studio tours, yeah. going to visit um, Etsy sellers, understanding how they, they use Etsy, what their challenges are. I think it's it's really great. I love also the last number of years we've really, you know, started to think about product development really differently Absolutely. in terms of working with sellers. So I know probably a lot of sellers watching have participated in a prototype team mm -hmm. where they get to try and give feedback on something. And yeah. 
um, we change the product. Um, we do. We now do lots of surveys and user research. Lots and of surveys and research. Lots, and lots. Uh, I have to issue a plug here. Um, Heather and her team just recently did the first Etsy Success podcast. Yeah, that was um, great. Which is all about how we create product, and um, you can hear the voices of the people who are working on research and, yeah. and product for sellers. But it's something that. Great. is really integrated into what we do. Yeah, so if you want to listen to that, I think, yeah. I think it's really great. Um, it's on SoundCloud. Um, let's see. Um, I, I also think that things like this are good because I, I mm -hmm. think that there's so much good stuff that goes on beyond the, behind the scenes at Etsy, and right. um, sellers don't always know those things. Um, it's, really, it's really motivating for us to, to yeah. talk to sellers. Like it, you know, I just talked about all the programs, yeah. but I think when I talk to engineers and designers and, and uh, people in marketing, it's, it's really the most exciting part of the job. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. everyone's always clamoring to spend time with sellers. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's, it's why we get up in the morning. It's very cool. Um, so what has been one of your favorite moments in your time as CEO at Etsy? Um, oh gosh, there are just so many, so many, uh, so many good moments. I think that, um, it's really, like I just said, it's not, there's no kind of giant big moment for us. It's really all those little moments of, of meeting sellers. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think uh, one of the most exciting moments for me, this is, uh, we did our IPO, obviously, and we had a market in Times Square. Mm -hmm. And the most exciting part of that, to me, was not the, the IPO itself. It was walking around the, the market in Times Square afterwards and talking to all the sellers and... Uh, you know, seeing all the the characters in Times Square, like Elmo and um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and all naked these people, cowboy. Yeah. the naked cowboy, <laughs> <laughs> just all wandering around. And uh, you know, our sellers did really well that day. And uh, it was obviously a big day for for Etsy, the business. But um, the most exciting part for me was, as I was talking to sellers, they were telling me that they were you know selling out of merchandise and they had a really good day. And so it's that was kind of a a big moment in Etsy's history, but the but that happens all the time. Like yeah. I live in Brooklyn, walking around Brooklyn, you see sellers um, selling at craft fairs. And well, one thing that was great. neat about that day too was that so many of the sellers who were there had been had started their business on Etsy and been on Etsy for a very long time. Yeah. And so it was like in a lot of ways, kind of marking the growth of their business. And, and absolutely, it was, like, it was just really great hearing people's it, stories. And, and it was very global. Yeah. We had people from all over the world, yeah. and, and uh, I think that. You know, we were working with uh, with with Nasdaq, and I don't I think I don't think they'd ever seen anything quite like it. No. <laughs> they uh, they see a lot of companies go through, but Etsy was uh, I think was a was a favorite yeah. uh, in terms of just uniqueness. Um, let's see, uh, Joanna and Eva Duai of Noali in Germany said we'd like to ask Chad to share his experience about pushing a business over a plateau to its next stage in a healthy way. Yeah, so I think that um, Etsy has been through a number of plateaus. Uh, you know, I've been here for eight years. Uh, you know, the first plateau for me was getting the technology operation in order, and then it was uh, learning how to be a CEO, and then it was you know being a public company, and there are a bunch of mini plateaus um, in between there. But I think that um, the big lesson I would have it gets back to what I was saying in the beginning is um, you have to be persistent because mm -hmm. each of those levels. Um, is harder than the last one. Mm -hmm. And so not only do you have to be persistent, you have to be stronger as you get through each level. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you have to really believe in yourself and you know, believe in your vision and believe in what you're doing because the more successful you become, the more people are watching you. Mm -hmm. So you know, if, you're a, if you're a seller on Etsy, it's, you, know, there, you, you have people who may be competing with you, your, your family is watching your business grow. Um, you may be investing more and putting more of your own money at risk. And so um, the pressure goes up and up and up. But I think mm -hmm. you have to really, uh, really believe in, the, believe in the vision and kind of stick to the vision and, and uh, you know, work through the hard times. Yeah. I mean, I like this part of the question that's about growing in a healthy way because I, I think it's, yeah. it's that, you know, it's something that over and over, I mean, I think that feels really important to us at Etsy, but also to sellers that they grow in a way that still feels like aligned with their values. Yeah. They keep the spirit and the craftsmanship of what they're doing. Absolutely. And I think it's, um, it's important to find that right pacing. And you yeah. have to, as I was saying earlier about family, you have to, um, you have to find time to be a human being. Right. Um, you can become so successful that you could focus all of your time and energy on work. 
Right. Um, and I know many of our sellers, uh, you know, something big happens in your business and you, you get a lot of orders and the next thing you know, you're working, you know, 16 hours a day and yeah. you have to figure out how to manage that growth in a way that, um, that really kind of preserves your sense of self and humanity yeah. and uh, allows you to stay connected to the thing that uh, uh, led you to start the business yeah. in the first place. I think it's extra hard to draw that balance if you have a home-based business and like really yes. trying to integrate work Absolutely. and family. Um, let's see, Rustin Moth in the U.S. Um, has a similar question. What's your vision for keeping Etsy at the cutting edge? What keeps shoppers coming to Etsy? And P.S., thank you for keeping Etsy strong so far. Mm -hmm. Um, you're welcome. I always appreciate the, uh, the thank yeah. yous. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Etsy is a, uh, an amazing company and we've grown a lot and we'll be 11 years old this year, which wow. is uh, um, really significant for, a, for an internet company. I mean, even, even Google is, you know, not even 20 years old. So mm -hmm. um, we've been around for a long time. I think that the real key, frankly, is... Um, being open-minded and being open to change. Uh, you know, nothing can stay absolutely the same. And so we're always thinking about, like, how can we continue to grow Etsy in a healthy way um, while preserving what's most important about Etsy, that, that human economy, that humane uh, way of looking at commerce and community. Um, so, you know, we, we obviously keep up with technology. Um, you know, as we're building the company, we're always hiring more and more really capable, passionate people. Um, you have to really grow the company with the, the, the kind of the size of the opportunity. And um, uh, I, I think it's really all about being open to change, but mm -hmm. at the same time, being really committed to the core of who you are. Mm -hmm. That same idea of sort of being persistent, but keeping like being, space for the vision. Being persistent, yeah. but, uh, you know, sticking with who you are and, and uh, you know, continue moving forward. Yeah. Although moving forward, in reality, you're kind of zigzagging, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's normal. Yeah. Um, what do you wish that, pe that sellers knew about you or people who work at Etsy? I think that, um, I think many, many sellers understand this already, but I, I, I just want to emphasize the degree to which um, we at Etsy care so much about um, yeah. the seller community and growing the company in a way that is consistent with our values. Um, you know, when we make tough decisions uh, and, you know, we're always, when we're sitting in the room, thinking about how do we make the decision that's best for the community. Um, you know, one of the key things we talk about is, um, you know, in making this decision, does it, is it, does it make uh, more people successful than, than not? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, we just care a ton. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can't emphasize that enough, that enough. And, you know, we, we have critics just like anyone else. Um, and uh, you know everyone is so passionate about Etsy. I get emails from people who um, you know have a critique of Etsy, and, and many times I've invited them in. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know some of the people who've come in have been uh, when they've left, they've been really struck by just how much everyone here cares. Mm -hmm. I remember one seller who came in and uh, was sitting on my couch, uh, sort of in my in my office, and. She came in really upset and she had legitimate complaints and, and we talked for a while. And she left Etsy uh, six, maybe six hours later and she was like hugging everyone and mm -hmm. there were tears and it was just, just really amazing. So I think um, uh, it's just amazing to me how much people care here. Um, okay, so that's all the questions. I have one more for you. Okay. Um, before we go, what's fun, one fun fact about you that most viewers would likely never guess? Um, I, I really like music, and uh, if you catch me in the right moment, um, I play guitar, and I'll, I'll sing like a, a country tune. Yes. I, like, I like Hank Williams and George Jones and Loretta Lynn and like all that stuff. That's the I, you could hear it in my voice there for a second. <laughs> Got a little southern accent. <laughs> yeah, for a second. that's that's growing up with uh, with a mom who really uh, loved country music in yeah. in North Carolina. So, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe one day we'll do a, a little a little song for folks. Nice. Okay. <laughs> I, I will like, not be like participating singing. in the singing, but you're welcome to play. <laughs> We've got some amazingly talented <laughs> we have an, musicians. A lot of amazing. At Etsy. And you've played in the Etsy the Etsy house band. Before. Oh yeah, yeah. we we played. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any video, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, okay, well, that's all our questions. Thank you so much for your time yes, today. Yes, thank and, you. And thank you, everyone, for all the great questions. Um, as always, if you have questions for our support team, you can request a call or email them by going to etsy.com backslash help. And thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye.